like Dr. Rich. Um, we'll be talking about well-being primarily in context to ourselves. Uh, we all are working professionals. We have other obligations in life as well. Uh, and so we need, it is imperative for us to focus on self-care. In this 21st century, especially with the COVID and the dengue and so many other diseases that are coming up, it is more important for us now to focus on ourselves and only then we can basically function well and impart and do uh, service to others as well. So I'll just go the slides. It is, it is. In well being. By the way, of mental well being, there's a lot of conferences and stuff going on all over the globe on mental health. So, uh, talking about this. Why is well-being so important? Before really we address, me and Ms. Musharat address about what it is, I think we all know what is well-being and why is well-being important to us. But let's hear from you folks, what's your take on this? Anyone? Uh, hello, Dr. Vuka. Uh, well-being means that you manage your life in a way that uh, you fulfill all the roles, responsibilities, up to the extent that uh, you satisfy all the all the people attached to your life. For example, my family, my professional life, my social life, and my then personal life as well. But then you get lost in this. Where are you then? Yes, it's very difficult to balance, uh, but up to some extent, it depends upon the time that uh, at that moment, I, I need to focus more on my professional life. Then probably next month, there's some event in my family, so I'll give more time to my family and compensate my, my professional life afterwards. So it's how you balance it in a, in a, in a best possible way. So balancing uh, is one of the strategies, uh, maybe, yes. And that is why it is important. We cannot ignore our family and friends. Uh, but yet again, if we create a balance, maybe that can work. So yes, but again, we can only do that provided we are basically at a safe place. Anybody else? So for me, well-being is actually loving your own self no matter what the situation is like. It's very easy to love yourself when you're you know, happy, when you are uh, achieving your dreams, attaining certain peace of mind. But what about the hard times? Like, you know, when uh, we come across a difficult situation and we start assessing our own selves, like, oh, am I not good enough? So I think well-being is actually <clears throat> considering that no matter what the situation is, this situation might be new. I might not have skills to tackle that situation situation but um, I know I'll get through that so it's not my fault that something has like you know come to my life in this way so considering and having that uh, self-confidence taking care of yourself not being hard on yourself for me is well-being and that is basically related to your peace of mind what is this? why is it so important for you to function I think if if I start considering, oh, I'm not good enough, I, I, I know my body mechanism, I'll be in my bed the whole day in that dark room because I don't want to face the reality. I don't want to open my eyes. I don't want to go to work. I cannot function properly. So I think I have to find certain, you know, small reasons to give myself an assurity that no, I don't think that this specific thing defines me, but about the other positive things that I have that my personality contains. So I think to function in day-to-day -day life, not being very hard on yourself is what is very important. And one should keep going with that attitude that no, this thing cannot bring me down no matter what. Okay, so um, students, would you like to share? Why is well-being important for you? Yeah, yeah. 
No, no, it cries here, yeah, my it's student. Okay. We have a student. We have a student. Yeah. So I'll just uh, make my comment very brief and then yeah, we can sure. go to it. I think it's really important uh, when you are a part of a unit, may it be a family, may it be institution. So when you are well, like maintaining your wellness on your own, specifically your mental health, only in that case, I think you one is able to instruct or guide or help others. If we are not well ourselves, how can we help any uh, uh, other person, in, either in the family or any student? So when we are taking care of our own mental health and trying to be positive, like excluding the negative people, negative comments, and towards more positive energy, only in that way we can help the people around. Yeah, I'll make it very brief. I think to function properly and to live, I think it's just to live, you need to have... I don't think so. Uh, living and surviving, it's something very different. I think just to live, you need to have, you know... Yeah, we are struggling all the time, I think. Uh, she yeah. needs to say. So um, I think that's a good uh, differentiation, uh, living and surviving. I think that, and it's all up here as well. Yeah. So it's how you think. Um, some people who are surviving think that they are living and they are right. And some people who are living, um, I think, uh, sometimes feel that they might just be surviving and they can do a little more to live a little better. So I think it's all up here. And, um, and that is why we thought of getting everyone together. And this is a session where we would want your input. This is about you. And this is about how we um, feel wellness should be conceived. It is a collaborative effort. It is more about praxis, reflection and action, both. So um, what you are going to do right now is take two minutes. We have very limited time. So this activity is actually really, really interesting. But I, we thought that we'll just spend a little time on it and not make you draw stuff. But you can draw if you want. So this is color symbol image. It's a visual learning technique. You can even use it in your classrooms. And uh, for any concept that you are tackling, you can ask your students to think of the color the symbol and the image of the particular concept that you are going to be dealing with. So uh, thinking of color symbol image, uh, what you are required to do is think of well-being. What color is well-being for you? What is the symbol of well-being for you? What is the image that well-being brings to your mind? So just two minutes, think about it. You can discuss in your groups and come up with two ideas that you find interesting in your table groups. Is that okay? Yeah? Go. You can do it. They can just... Um, yeah. Uh, Mahi, what, you, what I said was think individually first. Discuss in your group your idea. So think pair share. And then... Uh, with your pair and then as a group. So just present two ideas. This is because of the limitation in time. So in your group, the two ideas that you really liked, okay, share that with the entire, the whole group. Is that okay? Understood? The people who are online, uh, you can do the same. Think of a color, symbol, and an image. And I thought just on, to be um, on the safe side, the next slide, please. The difference between a symbol and an image. So i uh, just take a look. So a symbol, we see the dollar sign. That's a symbol for dollar. 
uh, we see friendship sign, so the yin and the yang. An image is whatever comes to your mind when you think of well-being. That image, what is it? What is the symbol? What is the color of well-being for you? Okay. We've got just two minutes. Online people, you too. And for each color symbol image, you need to give a rationale as well. Why is that color well-being for you? Why is that symbol well-being for you? Why is that image well-being for you? Ms. Masarat, can you hear me? There are two responses on the Zoom chat as well. Dr. Hina from Department of Chemistry, she is saying yellow is her color, smile is the symbol, and image of a grassy field. Now we take the collective responses. Okay. Okay. Online folks, I hope you are doing as well. Uh, yes, mentioned her color is green. What about your symbol? Online folks have already done. Dr. Nasha, we have a few more responses. There's another one by Sayyada Irtaza. Red is my color. I don't know. I can't read further on. Is, someone has written gray. Symbol is a book. Image is a library. Wonderful. That's interesting. Gray. Okay. What does? But what does gray reflect you? You need to give a rationale for each of the items that you choose. Okay, so we'll stop here. Can we all have you focusing? Okay, thank you. So let's take uh, responses from this group first. Yes. They're just putting me on stop uh, on spot for no reason. Okay, so the color that we um, actually we three had different colors in our head. Yeah, uh, I think we're going with the stereotypical image related to the colors as well because that exactly was in our head. We thought about red and green, but red again is associated with danger, and well-being could not be a danger until and unless you know you're going crazy. So for me, well-being for us, well-being is actually white, um, which we believe is a color of peace. So uh, white exactly is related to purity, purity of mind. And if you have attained that, you have attained the wealthy. And for flowers, I think I would pass it on to um, Adil. So when it comes to white, it also resonates the white border itself. When we enter in a classroom and there's the serenity and I see uh, that there's a piece and then I have different colors that I carry in the form of uh, markers and then we can add to our well-being and students' well-being. Thank you. Uh, 
Okay, so three of us, it's white. And he said green, uh, white, uh, because it's a symbol of peace, serenity, and green because uh, it depicts freshness and happiness. It's a lively color. So he said green, and the rest of us decided for white. Yeah. Wall hanging. Okay, nice. So, environment. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> mm, why? Okay. Because you have to hold your breath for a long time, yes. and that your makes your lungs uh, stronger. It's a yeah. So it's a totally different. So that's a change in the context. I think that is what makes it well-being for you, Anna. I think. Okay. Thank you very much. What is the image that comes to your mind? You, you, in this group. Did you think about the image? A smile. A smile. Okay. Okay. Smile. Why? You said it. So you explain why. I mean, any expression which comes through your face, mm -hmm. that, that is smile. Okay. A smiling person is always it's a symbol of a sign of uh, happiness and well-being. Okay, and stretched muscles. Yes, yeah, stretched muscles. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Last group. Yes. So for the image first, uh, I think I have put in a lot of detail into my image, if you can see it from here. Image. Uh, yes. It's somebody who's standing on a pyramid they think they're on the top of the world oh. and they're wearing a crown. There's a crown on that person as well. Nice. And they're smiling really wide. So there are three things that are pointing to the fact that the person thinks that they are mentally and physically okay. okay. Especially mentally okay. Okay, so the image is of, I think it's um, elevated um, inner self. Yes, elevated in herself. Anna, rightly put. Yeah. Okay, so yes. an elevated. Yes. They think they are on top. Yes. They think they are on yes. top. It's basically on the pyramid, but it's uh, an elevated inner self that they have conceived that to be, right? Yes. Okay, so the image. A uh, symbol. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, the symbol. Mm -hmm. I have put a thumbs up because. Thumbs up is used as a symbol these days because yeah. of social media. Okay. It's an emoticon and mm -hmm. not a, an emoticon, but something that we use. Uh, like what symbol. is the rationale? Thumbs up means everything's okay. Okay. So that also means that not necessarily is everything okay. It's just that you, uh, you keep yourself, you believe that everything is okay. Yes. Acceptance. Yes, acceptance. Hmm. So acceptance. Very good. And the color? Color is green. Why? Honestly, because they have limited colors. <laughs> I could have used all of those, honestly. Okay. Can I say so something? Uh, the color palette. Yes, all the color palette. Okay. We have all. Could not have done justice to it. Okay. But yes. All we right. need to put as many colors as possible. Okay, very interesting. The people online, mm, yeah. can you please uh, share your responses? If you can speak yeah. and we can, that would be fantastic. I, I would like to say something. Here, um, mm -hmm. Martin, here. So the color which I've chosen is red because red is a kind of uh, color of life. So if we are talking about students, students are not stones sitting in front of us. They are living beings. So I would choose red as a color. 
Then the second one where symbol concern, I would choose circle because it's a kind of process which is never ending process. There is no end to it. And the image which I've chosen is a spring because even though if it is a um, uh, circle, never ending process, but there are twisted and twists and turns. So we have to be uh, you know, considering those twists and turns also while working on this process. Thank you very much. Very interesting. And when you're thinking about twists and turns, you're thinking positively because your mind creates the image of spring. That's brilliant because not every, like just what Maheen just said, um, that when you give a thumbs up, not necessarily is everything all right, but you think it's okay, uh, even if it's not all right. And in the same way, when you talk about uh, twists and turns, the image that you have described is spring, which is a very positive image. So image is positive, The whatever is happening within that image for you may not really be positive. Um, am I right in saying this? Yes, yes, sure. That is what I meant. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was really interesting. Who else is there? We have other comments. Uh, Asad Rahman mm -hmm. gray is uh, he is selected gray. Okay. Uh, because most of the things in life fall in gray, mm -hmm. both because it is a symbol of intellectual continuity mm -hmm. and library makes me peaceful. Library makes you peaceful. Okay. Why is library... Um, so you mean mental health? When you go into a library, you, you find your mental peace there? Yes, exactly. If, I, if, I, if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, exactly. Because library, you know, somehow you can relate it with the classroom also. And it is also a storehouse or a modern kind of, uh, you know, as we see a CPU or something in which we record and everything. So it makes me, you know, good to be at a library. Okay, thank you very much. So see, now what I've done is I've put all of this down here. Um, and to sum up what we were doing with this activity, the color symbol and the image, we see that people within this room and people online who are part of this um, session on well-being, uh, what they're thinking about. What they're thinking about is what well-being is not. Not just what is well-being, but what well-being is not. And what they are thinking about is the environment, the surrounding, the context from which we, so uh, Furkan Saab mentioned the two paintings here. So when we talk about, and he talked about another life, another context, which is the underworld, under, undersea world. So we, when we think of well-being, we are not thinking about the immediate, we are also thinking about the extended. So we are, and we, if we do not make connections with the extended environment and our extended selves, we have to uh, be connected with ourselves, as somebody said here, um, so it's elevated inner self. So you have to have an elevated inner self. You have to have a positive image of yourself to be able to give, to be able to reach out, to be able to extend yourself to others. Um, if you yourself are going to be misery stricken, anxiety stricken, st under stress, worried all the time, then think about how you are contributing to the extended environment. So. Um, when we talk about um, the well-being, concept of well-being, we are talking about a lot of things that are outside of us and not just, although we are talking about mental well-being, we are talking about our physical well-being, but that cannot happen until and unless it comes from outside and goes from inside to outside. So it's both ways. So in a way, Martin Thomas, what he said about the circle, 
something which is ongoing i would think that it's like a spiral spiral as well because it go should go up and up and up because a circle goes back to where it starts and then the journey begins so but in a spiral you go up but anyway that's a way to look at things um so um i'll hand over the mic to uh, ms aisha uh, to take it on from here thank you um the next thing that we are going to talk about is that we all know is that okay now okay so we all know that we do basically go through different anxieties in life we do have problems on and off how we do tackle them sometimes sometimes it, it takes the, it takes time so let's let's look at the demands and expectations that we have for ourselves and that the environment has for us or from us so one is yes we all want to work on our self care how many of us love ourselves you can openly say that i love myself the most i love myself <laughs> i think that was only one person who said that <laughs> why 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 don't you why why can't you say that okay let's say once for all all of us say that i love myself i love i love for kaun sa aapko bahut mushkil lag raha hai why for kaun sa why are you finding it difficult to say uh, no uh, it's easy and uh, i love myself and that's why i'm giving uh, no 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 uh, i was reluctant because why why people are not saying that very confidently i, I was thinking that from day start i start loving myself by uh, waking up early going for a gym walk on a on a empty street at 6 am in giving time to myself and again it's part of that yeah that is love, yes, I love that is self love yes but it's difficult to accept that we love ourselves the most exactly hai na yeah. especially in the culture that we are in it is very hard for us to accept and tell to tell your spouse or your children or your parents or some siblings it's me i love myself i am the priority here then anybody else comes in but actually it should be like that because only then we'll be able to help others exactly okay moving on managing stress and the related dynamics which may include we all have these family responsibilities kisi ki kam hai kisi ki zyada hai but we all have these responsibilities there are lots of fa- financial constraints now with the inflation going on ye up to since post covid things have changed so much and with the political scenario in pakistan uh, we don't know where we are and what is going to happen about us the next day yes the instability is there the conflicts within us with the environment and that is our social relations and and, and our social influence make us who we are but how can we make ourselves better responsibility and another important very uh, important factor which dr ruksana uh, wanted us to talk about is was in context to when we talk about self care was in context to that okay when we focus on our well being how is it going to help the students how are we going to take care of students well being that is very important we as professionals we as faculty members over here we as teachers and staff members we are dealing with students on day to day basis so how do we tackle that unless and until we are not basically taking care of, of ourselves and we are not in a proper frame of mind we won't be able to help them and when i say proper frame of mind this does not only imply here to mental well being only but to physical well being as well you want to say something sure. yeah so um uh, connected to what uh, aisha just said and you all just been told that i have a, a long um, experience uh, with the schools so um, what students used to i used to be principal or vice principal in school so um, what students used to come and tell me on um, many occasions miss ek hamari miss hai and that teacher thinks that she cheats fought with her husband because when she comes to school she's always in a very dusty um, mood okay and or 
things like that. You know, when uh, students come and talk to you and comment, or you hear them talking to each other and commenting on students, uh, a teacher's nasty mood, or the way the teacher is cranky all the time. So again, you see, it's the mental well-being of that teacher, which is uh, basically not right. But what is she doing? She is that spill effect um, that uh, 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 creates that environment in a classroom very toxic. So uh, I think that when we take care of our mental well-being and mental health, what we are doing is saving our students from that toxic environment because we are then masters of our own um, uh, moods and we can, you know, no matter how much uh, we are cranky or it's not, we are human beings, we are cranky time, at times, we are um, uh, going through stuff that is not anybody's business, but how to control it, how to contain it within ourselves and not have that spill effect. Yes, Adil, I want to I can't stop myself from laughing because I think uh, I love myself phenomena has something to do with the age. You people are much more in the, this phenomena than the younger lot is. I don't know, but I think maybe the responsibilities, I think it has something to do with the age. I am just 18, okay? Not a day older. So how dare you say something? So I think that uh, maybe we younger lot feel that we are we have to fulfill so many other responsibilities and uh, i think it has to do with our eating patterns as well and clt could help us to start with the healthy eating by providing us with the healthy <laughs> Very true. Um, Adil Sab, like he said, yes, that really matters a lot. At the same time, imagine going in a classroom when you're already stressed out because of something. What kind of impact that is upon the students? And if you look around, I think back in my era, like I belong to the old school, so back in my time, I, I don't remember that we had that kind of stresses the way students have these days, I have so many students who tell me that they are working in the evenings. They are supporting themselves and their families. There are so many other issues that are going on. Uh, being raised in a single parent family, conflicts going on, being part of it, uh, the financial constraints, the uh, issues that are there among the families. So I think with time, the pressures uh, over the years on the younger ones have also escalated. So we need to keep that in mind and we can only help them provided if we are at a stable position. So, which is hard, which is hard. It's not possible. We as human beings, we also have ups and downs in life, but how to handle it, that, that's the key. Have anyone from uh, the online uh, session I would like to uh, share their input? Uh, they're most welcome to. Um, hi, this is Dr. Aisha uh, from Economics Department. Yes, we can hear you, Aisha. One. Okay, uh, on self love, on what uh, Ms. Uh, Aisha Teek has just mentioned that uh, what are others' expectations from us. I think one self-love thing is that we should learn to say no to certain works and responsibilities as well. Because sometimes we just uh, go so deep into fulfilling other person's expectations to prove our worth and to uh, tell that how good we are. So when we just <laughs> keep saying yes to everything, I think this is also we are actually indirectly hurting ourselves. So for me, self-love is like taking a break, uh, saying even uh, no to something that I am not comfortable doing or no, I'm not feeling like doing. I think for me, that's uh, also a form of self-love. Okay, thank you. That's very important. Learning to say no and uh, not trying to please um, everyone all the time because that doesn't help. That only uh, exacerbates our own problems and issues. I uh, Before um, uh, Dr. Aisha 
Aisha uh, continues. I just wanted to um, get your focus to this word responsibility, which we keep on using all the time. Okay, it's our responsibility. Can anyone please tell me what is your understanding of this word? What does it mean when we say responsibility? What does it mean? to do something like um, at times you don't even have a choice but you're obligated to fulfill something it could be any family responsibility work responsibility okay which may at times don't really have your consent but you still do that anyone else factor in this at times yes it does somebody else yes i think responsibility is in the context of duty there are duty bearers uh, state duty bearers individual duty bearers within family parents are duty bearers uh, to protect and promote rights of uh, individual especially children and other family uh, members so this responsibility in the context is in the context of uh, duty duties an individual have and in that context i think that is, uh, these are the actions an individual has to take for, for the sake of, not only for, for personal sake, for others' sake. Okay, so today um, I will make you, because I suppose everyone, does anyone else have a different, um, yes? Uh, I think so, responsibility is a compulsion, something which is compuls compulsion, you have to do it. Okay. You are bound to do something, so okay. that's come under yeah. the responsibility. Okay. Yes. I don't make it in definition of responsibility. I think um, as compared to what everyone is um, saying in the room, like obligation is something that you have to do no matter what, even mm -hmm. if it's under your control, you still have to do it. That's an obligation. Mm -hmm. But in my point of view, responsibility comes with the role that you're playing in life. Okay. Like you become parent, that is a willingness you become a parent, hence it's your responsibility to take care of the child right you become a teacher so you're talking about the role and the function absolutely okay. so for me responsibility is not an obligation okay but anything that you have willingly opted for okay. your will is involved in that. all right thank you very much so just take a look at what i'm going to show you right now perhaps uh, we can look at this word with a totally different eye okay and there's no right or wrong response to this. Everyone who said whatever they said was is correct. All right. So responsibility is actually the ability to respond. What does this mean when we say the ability to respond? If you know Bloom's taxonomy and you know the affective domain. So Bloom's taxonomy goes cognitive domain, knowledge, comprehension, application. Here we have receive, respond, and then value, and then so on and so forth. So the problem is that most of us, what we do is uh, when we know about something, and we do not comprehend it. We don't receive it. We don't receive the information. What happens? We do not comprehend it. When we do not comprehend it, we react and we do not respond. So when we react to things, and that is something that we as Pakistanis do as a second nature these days, that is what is happening because we do not understand, we do not comprehend a particular situation, whatever it is, and we do not receive uh, the knowledge of whatever is out there. So then what happens is we do not respond, we react to certain situations. And that is uh, not making us responsible people, okay? So this is just a different view of taking a look at the word responsible, uh, the way we use it and the way uh, we can look at it. Okay. I, th I think you would want to add. How would you differentiate between responding and reacting? Responding is with knowledge. And reaction is not responding. Not responding. Emotions. Emotion. That emotion takes time. 
I would just like to add that I think responsibility has a very different connotation for people. For example, uh, if my father is retired and he's not working, so it's my responsibility to take care of his needs. Because, because he's my father no, now. Because you have the knowledge that he needs your help. All right. And you comprehend it that without you, he will not feel comfortable with anyone else. Hmm. That's why you're responding. Otherwise, you can put a nurse, somebody uh, uh, with you. Uh, So I used to be very cross with him around 12 years back. That ये क्या है भाई? मतलब खुद ही जा रहे हैं, भाग रहे हैं, खुद ही जिम में जा रहे हैं. What What about my time? Because he's a merchant marine officer. He's a marine master marine. So ज़्यादा तर वो जहाज़ पे होते हैं, जब यहाँ होते हैं तो फिर ये हो रहा होता है. So um, he said to me, see, if I take care of myself, I'll take care of you better. And uh, this took me a while to understand. And then I started going to gym with him. He never said to me, "Kya zaroor chalo." So um, and then we play table tennis and we uh, spend time. So then you see what what happened in the last uh, five or six years is that I started working out with him. Things so I uh, joined with him in his time. Okay, uh, which I think made me happy. and i'm sure it made him happy so i think it's happiness and uh, whatever you do if you find solace in it and if you can you know whoever your loved ones are ab main yahan pe writing center mein hoti hu to mere paas mujhe students kehte hain mere tutors ki miss ek class aap upar padha kar aati hain yahan pe chal rahi hoti hai ek class to wo aap dekhiye if you are able to do something and you do it happily i think that that's uh, getting closer to well being i won't say 100% but i shall next time yeah okay for me well being i have been struggling with well being a lot being a counselor myself being a psychology professional yes there have been times where control them enough so there are different ways how i tackled it uh, one is i haven't been to a counselor myself but yes being a counselor myself so i knew there are different ways how to tackle it and i have done it that way it could be treating myself taking a time off uh, social distancing sometimes help me uh, so there are different ways of doing it finding happiness in little things um that is one thing which i still do um i make sure that i smile very often um i, I actually people who know me they would they they know that i smile no matter what and that that keeps me happy from within as well uh, so uh, still being from the old school like you said uh, <laughs> uh, i am still very young at heart and i like doing all the things i wish i could do scuba diving and all these things as well um, maybe you never know i may do that uh, but yes uh, it's the hope it's the happiness from within and i think once you make up your mind that you have to work on yourself you find a way 
and this is this is what has happened in my case i would say okay now it has gone again um we'll quickly move on to the different uh, five ways uh, how to deal with well being and we will give you general tips we'll skip some of the slides now and we'll talk about different ways in how we take care of ourselves or how we can take care of ourselves and it it's not necessary that we follow all this it varies from person to person for you it may work, work something else for me it works something else so it depends on uh, what to do um so i'm just going to skip this how do you focus on your well being we'll quickly move on to the next one and that is five ways of well being i'll ask musharat to really talk, talk briefly about it and then we'll talk about the general tips uh, in context to well being how many of you like googling about different illnesses or uh, maybe medicines maybe about you find that you are having oh there's dr ruchana there <laughs> so that's my so, hobby speed stop doing that <laughs> okay so this is um, a a crux or summary of what we were uh that um you, you um gardner ki theory hai seven intelligences ab wo eight se nine aur 10 ho gayi hai to usme uh, when we are talking about visual spatial you enjoy the environment ab foreign kisi ne yahan pe observe kiya ki ye green hai iska matlab hai ki the part that person is observant by nature uh, they are very much connected to the environment what is their surrounding like so that is one thing that really helps when you are observant when you're looking at your environment and you're looking at your surroundings and you then sometimes sign god that you know i am in such a much better place than uh, most of the people who are around me uh, but if you do not observe kisi ne mujhe ek dafa bataya tha aur wo mujhe bahut pyara lagti hai baat ki hum angrezi mein jab baaton ko samajhte hain to hame us tarah se samajh nahi aati jaise hum apni zuban mein koi sam क्या मतलब है उन्होंने कहा देखो जो चीज तुम्हारी सेंसेस से गुजर जाए जब आपको कोई बहुत बहुत अच्छी खबर मिले जिससे कि आपके सारे सेंसेस झुंझोड़े जाएं या बहुत बुरी खबर मिले जिससे आपके सारे सेंसेस झुंझोड़े जाएं वो आपकी वारदात है फर्स्ट हैंड एक्सपीरियंस आपने कोई चीज खुद से करके देखी है तो जब तक कि वो वारदात ना हो आपके साथ फर्स्ट हैंड एक्सपीरियंस आप नहीं कर बेस्ट चीज है टेक नोटिस ऑफ स्टाफ कोई खड़ा हो रहा है उसको प्रॉब्लम हो रही है उसको मदद कर दें किसी के पास कोई चीज नहीं है ये टैसिट नॉलेज जो आपकी टीचिंग के हवाले से इसको कहते हैं टैसिट नॉलेज वो फॉरन आपको जैसे टीचर्स को फॉरन पता चल जाता है कि दस बच्चों में से एक बच्चे के पास पेंसिल नहीं है और उसके पास एक स्पेशल पेंसिल होती है वो चुपके से जाके उस बच्चे को दे देती है ये क्या है माइंडफुलनेस है तो इसको टैसिट नॉलेज भी कहते हैं सो आई हैंड ओवर द माइक टू सो दीज आर माई टिप्स विच आई फील दैट केम फ्रॉम हेयर um and uh, we can then talk about well being more detailed way we can uh, have this discussion and conversation but over to aisha 
topic like well-being and R for that is not enough. I think we all have different experiences in our lives uh, into how we have observed other people taking care of themselves or how we have taken care of ourselves. Our life experiences are different from one another and so does uh, how we take, how self-care we can do maybe there are certain things we may not be able to do there are certain things we'll be able to do others may not be able to do so it varies from person to person so the important thing is this we need to focus ourselves first we need to give ourselves priority i'm not saying that baki sab ko chhod de bas apna hi soche so yes you will only be able to do this unless until you take care of of yourselves um there are few other tips we have already talked about all these most of you already know so acknowledge your reactions understand why this has happened why this is going on and then move on from there accept the uncertainty in life that is very difficult i know but uh, you the, the important thing is this once we start accepting things accepting life experiences what is happening in around us uh, whether it is uh, with the immediate family whether it is overall whether it's in the society whether it's the place where we are working in i think that is very important focus on positive news i have been doing this for years now the last thing which i did was and it really disturbed me a lot was this ashit salim's uh, passing away but i yes i followed it a lot and i realized that i think it's getting too much on me so i stopped listening to it and i think now i'm not really so yes this doesn't mean that you become indifferent to all this but there's a time and there has to be a level to what extent you have to really handle this uh, engage in some hobby hobby can be anything um, for me it is gardening listening to music hanging out with friends um anything do something different in life go out of the box take some interesting challenge uh, is umar maybe adil sir chhod na diye maine okay stop yourself from overthinking this is something very important you need to shut yourself problem is that somewhere after maghrib that is the time when we start thinking and probably by the time we are on the bed but any we go wild we have so many things to think of but you will realize that how many of us think in a positive way we think of what 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 went good today we think of all the bad things that have went throughout the day so if we stop thinking in that way or if if you really have to basically ponder over look at the positive aspects that has gone throughout the day and enjoy that smile once in a while shushe ke aage khade ho ke na aap agar smile karenge bada enjoy karenge i normally tell my students and uh, my clients as well when i was working as a counselor that stand in front of a mirror and start praising yourself it's hard because yeah kitna jeev lagta hai but it is very healthy it is you will you will discover a lot of new things about yourself um maintain good sleep patterns ye jo beech beech mein hum naps le lete hain yes it, it's good that we take an afternoon nap but if it's affecting your night sleep then it's wrong eat healthy uh, dr ruksana ko jis tarah maine kaha hai ki stop googling about health issues um, that is one thing there there are other slides as well related to this and perhaps uh, we will send it over through email and uh, ish or dr ruksana ha uh, yeah you will send it over so that is very important another thing is this please if you think that this is something which is out of your league and it's been taking a long a lot of time and you are still not trying to overcome with your thoughts or with your feelings or with your emotions and it's basically not helping you talk to some colleague talk to a friend talk and go to a counselor it doesn't harm it is going to help you in any way talking to someone always helps 
this is my experience. It's hard, but it works. Thank you, folks. Thank you, everyone. If you, I have one, just one question left. Um, can we have one takeaway from this session from each um, table group or, or from, huh? yes, just one takeaway? Or one thing that you think was helpful in the session? I think uh, the the way you guys are experiencing your uh, telling us that how do you cope with the uh, things and I think with the passage of time I realized that it's very important with the again I think age play, plays a very significant role uh, because uh, at this point in time I realized that there is as you mentioned just there is a difference between responding and reacting that is what it is but I'm, I'm really thankful to all the things it's very insightful and i think we need more of these kinds of well-being sessions where we can talk about freely without being judgmental and without having the fear that we are being recorded and yes we are so <laughs> yes we are so i think these things are very important thank you very much Yes. Uh, we are going to put up uh, learning groups which are going to call communities of practice. We're trying to formulate some structures around it. Very soon we'll send you an invite and you can suggest themes and people, faculty who want to join a specific theme will be you know, most welcome to join and we'll be uh, calling these sessions again and again. We did have actually a faculty wellness session uh, with us before COVID and we had covered a lot of ground among ourselves, the group. So we're going to go back to it again. And I think that's a remarkable way of connecting and sharing. And there you'll feel more comfortable. There'll be no cameras, no recordings, and it will be just um, us uh, doing our talk and trying to solve. These are just feelers to start you off. And then we'll have thematic groups. Yeah. I think it's just that we need to keep on reminding ourselves yes, yeah. over and over again that this is where we need to focus on. One more response. Yes. I think that I learned is uh, an experience, knowledge-based uh, response, because mostly in class, students respond based on reaction. They don't understand, they don't value the feedback of a faculty, or they learn from the group behavior, or they start reacting rather than responding based on knowledge. So that's very important. Secondly, there should be some activities so that we, as a faculty, evaluate ourselves that how uh, well-being we are based on. Yeah. So I conducted some activities based on the well-being uh, month uh, on 12th of October, and uh, out of 68 students, uh, 23 were having swear issues. I have their uh, last six months examples. They justify their their situation based on examples, and uh, 23 students are swearly in in a very difficult situation. They don't share with their their family, their friends, and rest of them are unable to understand what actually mental health is. So I think we should conduct some activities like that or. Uh, for faculty as well. Yeah, for faculty, I think CLT has, this is the second time they're working on wellness. Uh, but for students, from time to time, there are sessions for them in groups by the counseling center. I'm not very sure if it's being done on at the society's level, but yes, as far as counseling center is concerned, they are doing it. But you are right. Many people are not even aware of what wellness is, what wellness means to them and what is going on in their lives. You're yeah, right. Okay, I would like to hear from you. So uh, the session was very helpful for me, especially uh, being a student uh, sitting with the faculty. I think that there should be more sessions like this uh, that includes the students and the faculty. It would be very helpful and students would be more comfortable and uh, sharing their opinions, sharing their experiences and whatever uh, they are struggling for. And second thing, uh, 
being a student, being an observant in a society, like you talked about Arshad Sharif's case, uh, many other cases happen, and you experience everything uh, being an observant. So it was very helpful uh, to know how to tackle that. This was the uh, most important thing for me here. Yeah, thank you. Blocking out stuff. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thank you for being uh, such a lovely audience. Anyone from the online uh, would like to share because I'm not going to Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Imrana, do you want to speak? Anish, should we end the session? Welcome. Um, Hanji, I don't see anyone speaking. Thank you.